Excuse the mess, but I won't be entertaining this month, whatever this month is. Like you, I miss the pre-pandemic conferences when we could get together and eat and drink and laugh like nature intended, but I have to tell you, I think this brave new virtual world offers some tremendous opportunities. For example, housekeeping, so much easier. And if I'm not flying and Ubering all over the country, then I have a lot more time to customize my presentation for each and every client like I did for these folks. As promised, we've saved the best for last. Please welcome Mac Dryden. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, wow, that's amazing. You are too kind. <laughs> Stop it. I, well, I didn't mean like, you know, immediately or anything. I, I was hoping for kind of a gradual tailing. Dan, could we do that one again? No. Okay. Well, I can't tell you what a thrill it is to almost be with the terrific folks of Bugmugma. Kind of, kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? And of course, I got to chat with your remarkable owner and CEO, Mrs. Williams, and realized how much in common I have with this company and you. For example, my wife and I just celebrated our 24th wedding anniversary. So for almost a quarter of a century, I too have been owned and operated by a woman. I admit I was disappointed when I found out we couldn't meet at that fabulous hotel in Chicago because I've been there before. They have fabulous room gifts. You put this in your suitcase, they'll bring you some more the next day. This was right there in my bathroom. Can you believe it? And my wife was pretty thrilled with this, I'm going to tell you. And I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but these actually fit into the overhead bins. I mean, you come to conferences for takeaways, right? Super. Max Goal Achieving Guide is as hilarious as it is inspiring. It's chock full of tips and techniques that will motivate you to reach higher and accomplish more than you ever thought possible. His fascinating stories of his travels and how he ended up in a Moroccan prison are both chilling and, yes, laugh out loud funny. And finally, his accounts of his battles with two different types of cancer will fill your heart and leave you breathless with laughter. I got the bad news and I said to my doctor, okay, what are we going to do about this? He said, you're going to go into surgery. You're going to lose a testicle. You're going to undergo 17 weeks of radiation treatments and you're going to pray to God that we get. I said, well, hold on, let's go back to step one. What was that? Lose what? I don't want to rush into this because, you know, you just get more personally attached to some organs than others. I got laughs from my radiation mistress. You know, I'm lying buck naked on this glass slab. She's drawing these Navajo rug designs on my nether parts, aiming this thermonuclear device at me, telling me it's perfectly safe. And then, of course, she puts on a lead vest and goes into the fallout shelter. Do you know how they get to the back of your eyeball to work on it? They deaden the muscles around your eye, and then they just pull it all the way around, which is gross, but very handy. You know, it just beats the heck out of this. And I was awake for this while they sewed this thing on the back of my eyeball. Yeah, well, I wanted to keep an eye on him, you know. 